hello Aquarius. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm here with your weekly messages. My name is Emily Gear. I'm a transformative energy healer and a multidimensional channel. And this week was an eclipse week, the total, a total eclipse of the sun in the sign of cancer, plus a new moon in the sign of cancer. So a lot of different energy coming in this week. Um, and that's not all that's happened this week. All kinds of things have happened this week. So um, what we're going to do is a general reading right now. If you find it doesn't resonate with you, then be sure to check out your ascendant, your moon sign, and your Venus sign. And um, also, there will be a link in the description box below to an extended reading that dives directly into romantic relationships, okay? So um, this reading is just general. It, I don't know what will come out, whether it's business, uh, relationship or just um, ascension energy often comes out so um, I'm just shuffling your cards now let's go ahead and get an indication of what energies Aquarius is dealing with this week um, this eclipse week specifically please energies for Aquarius for this week okay the first one to pop was the Page of Pentacles. And so to me, that feels a little bit like restarting, restarting over um, in some aspect of your life, almost like this feeling of um, being a child or having a beginner mind. Beginner mind came out in some reading last week. I don't remember which sign it was. Um, looking at things with new eyes, some kind of restart coming in where you start out just like a brand new kid or something like that. So let's get a little more information about this energy that's coming in for Aquarius, please. All right. All right. Speaking of being a brand new child, here we have the six, oh, sorry, six of cups showing up, but we also have the eight of swords, which frankly... If I had to pick an Aquarius card, that would be the one, maybe because I know way too many Aquarians in my life. And they all do this. They all do this thing where they tie themselves up with their own mental fears, like such a sign of, of freedom and rebellion, but you're locked up here sometimes. So I do feel like um, this to me, looking at these three cards together, is a big breakout of some of the um, programming fears, the matrix shit that has affected you since your childhood that you probably brought in when you were a kid and it's just kind of um, coming up for reevaluation now and as you release that, uh, you almost feel like you're getting a second childhood or second, I don't know, sense of, of freedom and, and like youth and innocence. Let's see what else wants to come out here. There is the Six of Swords, and that is moving into a better place after this period of like mental um, battles, mental struggles. It can be, I think I did, I think it was Capricorn's reading, um, where this actually felt like another person having uh, emotionally manipulated them or manipulated them on some level through the mind, okay? And um, that may be true for you. This could also simply be about moving away from some kind of difficult situation, particularly if you've got these long-held beliefs of your self-worth or, you know, um, who you need to be in this life, what you need to do to be successful, all that kind of stuff. I feel like that's coming up for you guys. Um, and what just came out here is the Eight of Pentacles with the Queen of Wands. And I feel like this is you setting your own course, doing your own work, deciding what is important to you and not acting from this old programming where um, that you may have received in the time of childhood. All right. Your restart is has to do with your own self sovereignty. Sovereignty is coming up in all the readings I'm doing in the second half of this week. Um, this is about creating your own reality and, and being the author of that and being fully empowered 
without any questions asked, being willing to do the work, um, to take the steps that are necessary to change your own life. It also is about not worrying about controlling others. I'm getting a strong feeling right now that there is like this fear about how others will act or react and this feeling of needing to control that. And it's possible that the chains around you have been all about being uh, wanting to control someone else's reaction. I'm just gonna fix the lighting here, sorry. Uh, wanting to control another's reaction or wanting to have some kind of control over it when it's really not yours to control. Like, I understand the idea behind not wanting the, especially if we're talking about somebody who is emotionally manipulative in some way, you know, I totally get not wanting to have to deal with the consequences of how somebody who is already imbalanced might behave when you take your power back, right? Um, and yet, this is really about understanding the boundaries between you and them, and that goes both ways. So your boundaries that protect you from them being able to control you, but it also protects them from you trying to or wanting to or desiring to in any way control them. It's not your responsibility. It's not your right. You know, it goes both ways. You might be like, oh, I don't want to control them at all but I feel like I need to take care of them. Well, in that case, it's, you know, it's not your responsibility. Um, so this can go a lot of different directions, but I do feel like the main theme here is this like brand newness, okay, with the fool just popping out here, that results from this, this application of boundaries and one's personal truth with the queen of swords coming out. The, the person or thing that, that is causing this could be anything. This could be your job, which you're miserable in. This could be your family, which is just operating on this old, like, fucking, I just wanted to say tribal kind of um, behaviors, you know, which do not make logical sense, okay? It could be uh, an intimate relationship or a relationship with a parent or even a child. So... Um, I think child relationships are really, really complicated because it's very hard to know where your boundaries are with a child and, and they're different depending on their age. So, you know, there are things that a teenage child sh can and should be responsible for um, with regard to their own actions that a two-year-old is incapable of, right? So you need to adjust your boundaries and be willing to adjust your boundaries um, depending on the age and the maturity level of the child, right? You are still a human being. You're still a sovereign human being, even when you had children. I feel like that's one of the biggest matrix lies out there that once you have a child, just because you feel the emotional and the even like primal need to, take, to care for them, which you should be, um, you should be caring for them, that somehow you have sold your entire life into slavery to this child. <laughs> okay, that's not, that's, that's really not what we're meant to be doing. You know, we are still sovereign beings that have a purpose. Even if that purpose is that child right now, there's a much bigger picture, a much bigger unified picture. Now that is also to say that we are individuals that are part of a whole, right? So there is a part of us that is given up to the whole, okay? There's also a part of us that has a unique gift to give this world um, outside of anyone else, including your children. So keep that in mind. That, that needed to come out for somebody. I don't know, that I went down like a little bit of a tangent there, but um, do keep that in mind. And it's important to sort of set this, this, um, I'm hearing compassionate boundary because the queen of swords, while she can, you know, in her negative state, she can be a cold heart, like stone cold bitch. But, but we're looking at a queen of swords who has clear boundaries, but also um, is acting in the highest and best good of all. Okay. The star. This is your card, card of Aquarius. Um, but it's also the card of like... Um, I'm feeling, again, the idea of a new beginning, which keeps coming out here. This is the third time that's come up. <coughs> and this new beginning comes about through transformative healing. 
This is about a new focus. I'm feeling a new focus in your life. So if you focus your entire existence towards serving a job or serving um, a partner, serving a child, this is a new focus and this is a focus back on the central, I heard the central sun, but, but the central sun is within you. That's the solar plexus, which is the seat of the I am, okay? This is refocusing on who you are and doing right by yourself in addition to serving the highest and best good of the collective, okay? They are not mutually exclusive. else wants to come out here okay we've got the queen of pentacles with the um the nine of of wands showing up and it's like you have run yourself i feel like you've run yourself into the ground by essentially not listening to your body, by not allowing it to speak to you and, and tell you what you need at any given time, you've devalued yourself in, in order to serve someone else or something else. And if we go back to the beginning of the reading, my feeling is that you are getting this restart now, which is confirmed by the star showing up here. So, um, so do you know that you know, you're already probably making the decisions you need to make but with the um, eight of pentacles showing up, you know, make sure that you're putting in the work to really um, end the cycle of exhaustion is what it feels like, a cycle of exhaustion. I'm getting guided to pull a few oracle cards and then a, and then a tarot card for each one to clarify. So let's go ahead and do that and see what wants to come out. So this is for Aquarius, please, for this week. Oh my God, this is so funny. Okay, uh, does one more want to come out? If it's so, let's get it. Yep. Oh my God. I love when they tell me to do stuff and they make it freaking perfect. Just pulling the cards that go along with these. Okay. First card out was align your life, right? What were we just saying? Like aligning with the, um, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Aligning your, your will with the will of source, aligning um, uh, with the highest and best good of, of yourself and the collective, that they are not mutually exclusive, right? And the clarifier I'm getting here is the Five of Swords. And so that makes me feel like this is absolutely an ego battle within you, like a fear within you that making that choice is somehow irresponsible, somehow not, you know, somehow bad, that we will, I'm hearing that we'll be punished for putting ourselves first or, or caring for ourselves in lieu of, of putting everyone else first, okay? Um, and so I think that that is a very old idea which needs to be dealt with this week. Um, the text here says, align your life, what is not aligned or, or needs to change? So what is not aligned with your highest and best good? Give that some thought. And it's going to be these things that are throwing you into this ego, ego struggle. Next card is, you're already doing it. Stop overthinking, keep facing your true north. What did I say about Aquarians? The overthinking, the mental prisons, right? Um, but I also just literally said the words, you're already doing this. So know that you're already doing this. And, um, but make sure that you are checking in with yourself frequently to make sure you do feel that sense of alignment, to make sure that you are facing your true north. It's clarified by the nine of pentacles. And this to me is all about sovereignty, which keeps coming out. This is about achieving, um, it's kind of like the, the combination of the Eight of Pentacles with the Queen of Wands. It's like um, achieving a certain level of personal, uh, personal best or personal 
um, personal achievement, whatever. Uh, but again, the most important thing that I can say here is, is sovereignty and really respecting and seeing the value in yourself that you are a kind of princess or you are a kind of, um, you are something that deserves and needs to be treated with the kind of care and love that you would give to everybody else, okay? Um, but you are, again, already doing that, as this card says, and as I said before when reading. Um, and the final card that came out is the initiation, rite of passage, crossing the threshold. What did I just say, you know, that this is um, an important period of uh, being able to move forward in your life. Actually, maybe I said that in the Capricorn reading. <laughs> I can't even remember right now. But, um, but this is a rite of passage. And, and it does have to do with setting your goals and priorities and understanding what is, what is aligned in your life and what needs to change. Here it's coming up with the Seven of Cups, which is all about setting the priorities. That, that setting of the priorities, that picking and choosing what really aligns with you personally is that rite of passage. That is the gateway that you're going through in order to up-level. This is all, watch the Capricorn reading. If you, especially if you have some planets in Capricorn, this part of it is very similar. Um, so this restart that you're already getting because you're already doing it is, is, is really profounding, profoundly aligning your life so that you are going through this initiatory phase. All right. This is very important for you moving forward. Um, this again is just a week here of time, but it feels like an important week. And this whole month of July is extremely important with all of the astrological significance, all of the energy coming in. Um, so just know that whatever you're going through now is just as uncomfortable as it might feel that if you keep aligning to your true north and your true purpose and your your own um, soul truth, then you're going to be making the right decisions and the right things are going to be moved out of your life. The right things are going to come into your life. The right things are going to have boundaries set with them that are going and, and that will provide the other person or situation or group the opportunity to get on their true path. Because when you are in codependent relationship with any person, thing, or individuals or groups, they are not afforded the opportunity to do that, okay? So I feel like a very strong message about that as well. So guys, I hope this was helpful. We are going to look directly into romantic relationships on uh, Vimeo. The link to that is in the description box below. Please click it and head over there. And um, if you decide you would like a private reading, you can schedule that with me on my website, which is IamEmilyGear.com. That's a private reading, um, Akashic Record, a session, um, energy healing, or any combination of any of the things that I do. Okay. I will talk to you then. Hopefully see you on Vimeo. And if not, see you next week. Bye.